The butterfly effect. It's the idea where small, seemingly unrelated events play a huge part in influencing a much larger and complex outcome. A bizarre example of this would be like a butterfly flapping its wings in the US, causing a ripple in the air, creating a tropical storm in India a day or two later. That example is a bit random, but football is a sport that contains a ton of butterfly effects like that, where one small decision in the sport could lead to some greater unexpected outcomes. So now, let's take a look at some of the most significant butterfly effects that football has ever seen. Emiliano Martinez is one of the most notable goalkeepers in football today. However, it wasn't always like that. Despite being with Arsenal since 2010, Martinez never got the chance to play with them and was always loaned out to different clubs, like Oxford United, Sheffield Wednesday, Rotherham, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Hetafe, and Reading. With these loan moves to different clubs on a lower level, Emiliano was never really on the radar of Argentina's national team or even Arsenal's to be the number one goalkeeper. He was almost never given a chance to prove his quality. However, on June 20th, 2020, everything changed for Emiliano. In a game between Brighton Hove and Albion versus Arsenal, everything was normal and it was said to be an ordinary Premier League match, but it wasn't. At around the 36th minute, starting Arsenal goalkeeper Bern Leno and Brighton striker Neil Mape collided while going for the ball, and Leno ended up being injured and was set to miss the rest of the Premier League season. With Emiliano Martinez being the backup keeper, he finally got his first Premier League action in almost five years, and this Mape Leno incident changed the trajectory for Emiliano Martinez's career forever. This was the start of Emiliano Martinez's butterfly effect. Due to Leno's injury, Martinez saw out the rest of the season as a starting goalkeeper for Arsenal and was dropping man of the match performances for them week in and week out. Additionally, he was obviously given the start in the FA Cup final against Chelsea as well, where he went on to make some crucial saves to help Arsenal win their 14th FA Cup. He put in a stellar performance in the final and was seen emotional after it, but this wasn't going to be the first time he would perform well in the final. In the start of the 2021 season, Martinez played a part in helping Arsenal beat Liverpool on penalties in the Community Shield. Then, with Burn Leno returning and Arsenal favoring him as a starter once again, Emily Emiliano sought out a move to Aston Villa for a deal worth up to 20 million pounds. In his debut, he saved a penalty against Sheffield United, and throughout the rest of the campaign, he equaled Brad Friedel's club record for clean sheets in a Premier League season with 15 and was named Aston Villa Supporters Player of the Season. Through these world class performances Emiliano Martinez was putting up, he was called up to Argentina's Copa America squad to be the starting keeper on Messi's quest to finally win an international trophy. Now, in recent times, Argentina have been struggling to find a consistently good starting goalkeeper. Just look at the 2018 World Cup. Both Caballero and Armani weren't good whatsoever. However. Therefore, with Argentina's lack of good goalkeeper depth, Emiliano was given the chance to seal his place on the team, and he did exactly that. In the semi-finals of the tournament, Argentina had to face Colombia in a penalty shootout. Argentina and penalty shootouts recently, yeah, they don't really go too well, as we probably already know. However, now with Emiliano Martinez in net, times have changed. His trash-talking antics will forever go down in Argentina history. With him getting into the Colombian players' heads, Emiliano went on to save penalties from Edwin Cardona and later Yeri Mina, where Messi now has the iconic clip of telling his ex-Barca teammate to dance now. These penalty saves from Martinez got Argentina to the Copa America final, where they had to face the reigning champions Brazil. And thanks to Di Maria's goal and Martinez's saves, Argentina went on to win their first Copa America in forever, completing Messi's quest of finally winning an international trophy. Emi Martinez then went on to win the 2021 Copa America Golden Glove, and also being the goalkeeper in the team of the tournament for his performances, cementing himself as a national hero for the country. It then became crystal clear that without Emi Martinez, Messi wouldn't have won the Copa America. And that's facts. It didn't stop there though, because one summer later in the finalissima, Martinez kept a clean sheet as Argentina won 3-0 against the Euro Champions Italy, and Messi got his second international trophy. Then, the 2022 World Cup arrived, and of course, Emi Martinez was named as the starting keeper for Argentina in the tournament. And in this tournament, Emi Martinez put Argentina on his back and helped Messi go all the way. It didn't start the best though, with Martinez conceding two goals from only two shots in the game against Saudi Arabia, which led to Argentina's defeat. However, Argentina and Emi Martinez were mentality monsters, and this shock loss didn't phase them. They went on to qualify for the round of 16 by finishing top of the group. And in the game against Australia, in the last minute, Australia had a chance to draw the game. But thanks to Emi Martinez's heroics, it didn't happen and the shot was miraculously blocked. Meaning Emi Martinez won the game for Argentina. Then in the quarterfinals against the Netherlands, he saved two Dutch penalties and ended up being the key reason why Argentina were moving on to the semifinals of the World Cup. Then in the final against France, the French had a chance to win the game 4-3 in the last minute. Thanks to a one-on-one -on -one situation with Colomwani. However, in the biggest moment of his life, Emi Martinez made himself huge and saved Argentina big time. When it came time for the penalty shootout, Emi Martinez did what he did best and got into the French players' heads and ended up saving Kingsley Coma's penalty, helping Argentina win the World Cup 4-2 in the penalty shootout. After the game, he was awarded the Golden Glove and also the 2022 Best FIFA Men's Goalkeeper Award. Without Emiliano Martinez, Messi would not have beat the international trophy curse. Without Emiliano Martinez, Messi wouldn't have conquered the World Cup and basically end the GOAT debate. Without Emiliano Martinez, Argentina would not have made history. But there would be no Emiliano Martinez if Neil Mape didn't collide with 
Bert Leno a few years back. It's crazy how one event can reshape how history will be written. It's mind blowing. However, this butterfly effect is only one of the crazy few in this video. So let's keep it going. Real quick before we get on with the rest though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and it means a lot. So thank you. And also if you guys can, follow my Twitter and Instagram, both at Nabuto if you just want to hear my thoughts on football games, transfers, and overall just to get to know me more. So if you want to, feel free to hit me up with that follow. Thank you. Now the COVID lockdown back in 2020 was an interesting time. Not only in our daily lives though, but also in football. With the Premier League's project restart, the 2019-20 season was resumed during the summer, where players had to play in empty stands, get COVID tests 24-7, etc. One of these games in Project Restart was a struggling Aston Villa playing an overperforming Sheffield United, a seemingly normal game in the Premier League. But it was far from that. The Premier League at the time was going through significant changes, and one of them was how the games were being refereed, with the inclusion of VAR for the first time ever happening in this same campaign. As we all know, VAR is still a very controversial inclusion to this day, but it's not because of the technology itself. It's how the referees use it. The technology usually never lets us down, except this one time in the Aston Villa versus Sheffield United game. From a corner, the Aston Villa goalkeeper, Nyland, goes up to catch the ball and then falls back into his own net. The ball very clearly went over the line and the goal should have definitely stood. However, the VAR technology failed on that day and it didn't seem to be working in that first half. And the referee, Michael Oliver, didn't receive confirmation from the VAR that the ball crossed the line, so no goal was given. This was the only meaningful attack in the game and the match went on to finish in what felt like a meaningless nil-nil draw. But it was far from that. At the end of the 1920 campaign, the three relegation candidates were Norwich City, Watford, and Bournemouth respectfully, with Aston Villa finishing 17th place, one point ahead of Bournemouth, who had to go back down to the championship. So if Sheffield United got that win that they deserved, Aston Villa wouldn't have gotten that extra point, meaning they would have had 34 instead of 35 points. Also, if Sheffield's goal counted, Villa's goal differential would have been negative 27, and that would be lower than Bournemouth's negative 25, meaning Aston Villa would have been relegated and Bournemouth would have survived the drop. Now, of course, Bournemouth were furious that they were wrongfully relegated. One season in the championship isn't terrible though. Since Bournemouth are kind of a yo-yo club, we all knew they were definitely coming back eventually. But one season in the championship means that they will lose some of their top players because no elite player wants to play in the second division of England. And one of these top players that chose to leave Bournemouth was the Dutch defender Nathan Ake, who joined Manchester City for 41 million pounds. In the 2021 season, Nathan Ake didn't play a huge part in Man City's defense. But when the 21-22 season arrived, Pep Guardiola started to integrate Nathan Ake more into the starting 11 as a left back. Now he didn't play a crazy amount, but he did make 27 overall appearances for City, including 14 in the Premier League, and one of those appearances came against Arsenal. Man City and Liverpool were in a very heated tower race, so a win against Arsenal away from home was still absolutely necessary, and thanks to Nathan Ake, it was possible. You see, at around the 58th minute, while it was still 1-1, there was confusion in the back for City, and Laporte almost headed the ball back into his own net. However, Nathan Ake was on his toes, and ran back to his net and slide tackled the ball right before it went behind the line, having a goal line clearance for City. Rodri then went on to get the game winner and out of time, as City went on to win this game 2-1. These three points might have been seen as an impressive win at that time, but in hindsight, it was much more than that because by the end of the season, Man City ended up winning the Premier League against Liverpool to prevent their domestic trouble by only a single point. Meaning if Nathan Ake didn't save City with that goal line clearance, City wouldn't have gotten those two extra points from the win compared to a draw, and Liverpool would have won the league with 92 points to City's 91. But thanks to Nathan Ake, City won the league with 93 points instead. That is crazy, especially considering that one of the main reasons why Liverpool didn't win the Premier League that season was because of Nathan Ake, who might have never moved to Manchester City if Bournemouth didn't wrongfully get relegated if Sheffield United's goal counted. The butterfly effect for this scenario is crazy, but trust me, the next butterfly effect might be even more insane. Ever since Jurgen Klopp took over Liverpool Football Club, Liverpool returned to being one of the best clubs in England, winning a ton of silverware again, like the Champions League, the FA Cup, the Premier League after 30 years, etc. However, without two Brazilian players, Coutinho and Allison, none of this might have happened. Before we move on, I do have to say that this video was inspired by Finn's Bins, who actually made a more in-depth video about Liverpool's butterfly effect, and it stretches all the way back to Neymar's departure to PSG, so I highly recommend you guys go watch that as well. However, for me, I also want to talk about my club's success, but I want to talk about a butterfly effect that Finn's didn't actually mention, and it has to do with the goalkeeper, Allison. Now yes, it is very true that the sale of Coutinho from Liverpool to Barcelona for £142 million helped enable world-class signings for the English club, like Virgil van Dijk for £75 million, and Allison Becker for £66.7 million. Pounds. These two players cost around £141.7 million, pounds, which is right under Coutinho's transfer fee. Without Coutinho's sale, Liverpool would have never gotten the best center back in the world and also the best goalkeeper in the world without a doubt. But it's much deeper than that because Allison is the reason why Liverpool went on to win it all, something that Finns didn't mention, which is why my video is different to his. In the 18-19 Champions League campaign, Liverpool were drawn into a difficult group with PSG, Napoli, and Red Star Belgrade. The campaign started off strong for Liverpool, with them beating the group favorites PSG and Anfield 3-2, thanks to a last-minute goal by Roberto 
Roberto Firmino. But after this, the group stages became a roller coaster for the Reds. They ended up losing to Napoli away from home 1-0, beating Red Star Belgrade 4-0, then somehow losing to Red Star Belgrade away from home 2-0, and then losing to PSG away from home 2-1. It then all came down to the last match day against Napoli, where the only way where Liverpool could progress through is to beat Napoli at home. If they drew or lost, Liverpool were certainly out of the Champions League. Now the game started off well for the Reds, with Mo Salah scoring a great solo goal to give Liverpool the lead, something that remained safe with them until the very last minute of the game. Napoli had a cross in the box and it fell to Milik right in front of goal, but Allison barely saves it from going into the net, and the game ended in a 1-0 win for Liverpool, allowing them to progress to the round 16 in second place. If Allison didn't make that save, Napoli would have been the ones going through thanks to the head-to-head -head rule. However, because of Allison, this didn't happen. This save then allowed Liverpool to play Bayern in the round 16, where they would win 3-1 away from home to qualify for the quarterfinals, where they would then destroy Porto 6-1 on aggregate, and then they had to play Barcelona in the semifinals, where they had the iconic comeback at home, beating Barca 4-3 from 3-0 down. This allowed Liverpool to play Tottenham in the Champions League final, where they went on to beat Tottenham 2 0, which meant that Klopp and Liverpool lifted their first silverware in a very long time, the Champions League trophy, something they missed out on the prior season thanks to Karius and Real Madrid. Now, as we all know, mentality is everything in football, and one of the best ways to build a strong mentality is to win trophies, something Liverpool have now finally done. This sort of strong mentality would help the Liverpool players in the following seasons. In the 1920 campaign, Liverpool dominated the Premier League, with them having the most consecutive home wins with 24, the biggest points led at the top ever in the Premier League, having a 25 point lead over second place Man City, equaling the most wins in a Premier League season with 32, and the most home wins in a season with 18. With all of these records, and Liverpool getting 99 points, they won the Premier League for the first time in 30 years. Who would have thought? That's not it though, because in that same season, they won the UEFA Super Cup against Chelsea, and also the FIFA Club World Cup against Flamengo in the final. A couple of seasons after the 1920 campaign, Liverpool would go on and have a successful domestic cup campaign, winning the FA Cup and Carabao Cup, both against Chelsea in a penalty shootout. Now all of these accolades wouldn't be possible without Coutinho's sale, that's true, but more importantly, Importantly, in my opinion, none of this would have happened if Allison never made that save in that last Champions League group stage game in the very last minute of the game against Napoli. So on speaking behalf of all Liverpool fans, Allison Becker, thank you so much. Now obviously, this butterfly effect for Liverpool is crazy, but the next one about Real Madrid might be even crazier. In the 2014-15 season, Villarreal were playing FC Barcelona in the Copa del Rey semi-final. Denis Cheryshev, a loney of Real Madrid playing for Villarreal, made a harsh foul in the 38th minute of the semi-final and got a yellow card. It made no difference to Villarreal. Real in the end because they lost to Barcelona 3-1 in that match and 6-2 on aggregate. However, that yellow card that was accumulated meant that Cherishev was suspended for the next Copa del Rey game. However, Rafa Benitez, manager of Real Madrid at the time, didn't know that. With Cherishev now back with Real Madrid, the club had to play Cadiz in the Copa del Rey early on in the season. They defeated Cadiz 3-1, but in the game, Cherishev was selected to play. The Cadiz players and Barcelona players were aware that Cherishev was suspended, with Gerard Piquet even tweeting out laughing emojis at the time to make fun of Rafa Benitez. Rafa still had no clue though. With Cherishev even playing in the second half as well. However, the minute Rafa Benitez realized, he took Cherishev off, but it was too late. With Real Madrid playing an ineligible player, Real Madrid were disqualified from competing in the Copa del Rey that season, and Cadiz were given a 3-0 win by default. So with this huge mistake by Rafa Benitez and the other poor results building up, Real Madrid president Florentino Perez made the decision to sack Benitez and bring in an inexperienced manager, Real Madrid and football legend Zinedine Zidane. And of course, you guys probably know what happened after this. With Zidane at the helm, Real Madrid went on to dominate Europe. In the 2016 Champions League final against Atletico Madrid, Zidane won his first UCL trophy with Real Madrid, beating out their city rivals in a penalty shootout where Ronaldo scored the winning penalty. Then in the 2017 Champions League final, Real Madrid absolutely trashed Juventus, beating them 4-1 with Zidane setting up his team perfectly and Ronaldo putting in a man of the match performance. Then in the 2018 Champions League final against Liverpool, thanks to another Zidane masterclass by summing on Gareth Bale at the right time and a curious disaster class, Real Madrid won their third Champions League in a row, something I don't think will happen in the Champions League ever again. So with Zidane as the manager of Real Madrid for his first spell, they went on to win three Champions League trophies and one La Liga title from the 2016 to 2018 period. And this 3 P dominance would have never happened if Rafa Benitez didn't play the suspended Cherry Chef and then Copa del Rey. Crazy. Now of course, the Real Madrid butterfly effect is pretty insane, but the Leicester City one might be the wildest butterfly effect of them all. Leicester City were in a huge relegation battle in the 2014-15 season, with them being 20th place in the league for four and a half months, meaning it was almost certain that they were going to go back down to the championship. However, thanks to the masterclass management of Nigel Pearson, Leicester miraculously escaped the fate that seemed destined for them. In the last 9 games of the season, Leicester managed to win 7 of them, including against the likes of West Ham and Newcastle, to salvage a 14th place finish, helping them stay up in the Premier League for another season. Nigel Pearson was praised by Leicester City fans, despite being in a ton of controversies throughout the season. However, it was certain that Nigel Pearson was the man to lead Leicester once again in the 15-16 campaign, and the owners were backing him to do so.
so. That was until a wild incident occurred in the preseason tour over in Thailand. Now, if you guys didn't know, Leicester City is ran by rich Thai owners, with at the time, Vichai and Iowa Srivada Naprabha running the show. I know I butchered those names massively, my apologies. Regardless, these Thai owners have pumped millions into the club, with even the sponsor, King Power, being a Bangkok-based travel group. So with Thailand playing a huge part in Leicester City's Premier League success so far, disrespecting anything related to the Thai people would be way over the line. And that's exactly what happened in a Bangkok hotel. Leicester City players of the time, Tom Hopper, Adam Smith, and James Pearson, the son of Leicester City manager, Nigel Pearson, filmed themselves having an orgy. I have to bleep that word for obvious reasons, but they were having an orgy while verbally abusing three Thai girls at the same time, recording all of it and apparently sending it to their friends back home in the UK. One of the players in the video could be heard calling one of the Thai girls slit eye as someone called one of the girls minging, which is really offensive. Obviously, when this video got leaked, the owners of Leicester City had no remorse and terminated all three of their contracts. Apparently though, after an internal investigation, the son of Nigel Pearson James wasn't one of the ones who said something racist. But I'm not really sure how accurate that is, but I'm just mentioning that to you. Regardless, with the son of the manager being on the bad side of the Leicester City owners, this created a natural dilemma between Nigel and the owners as well. With the relationship between the manager and the owners deteriorating, the Thai owners felt like they had no choice but to sack Nigel Pearson and move on without him. And that's when they brought in Claudio Ranieri to take over Leicester in the 2015-16 Premier League season. And as we all know, Leicester City accomplished the impossible in this campaign, something they only had a 1 in 5,000 odds of doing so. The same odds of Kim Kardashian winning the United States presidency back in 2016. If you're living under a rock and don't know what happened, Leicester City won the Premier League. They were dominant, with them securing a total of 81 points and only 3 losses total for the entire campaign, only losing to the likes of Arsenal 5-2, Liverpool 1-0, and Arsenal again 2-1. Besides that, Leicester won or drew every other match, and secured the impossible feat of winning a Premier League, where a lot of credit is rightly given to Claudio Ranieri, who turned this team around into a counter-attack force that finished on top of the Prem. But it's crazy to think that if it wasn't for that racist or recorded in Thailand, Leicester City might have never won the Premier League trophy, which is one of the greatest underdog stories football has ever seen. It's crazy how the world works, and how impactful some of these butterfly effects are. Anyways, I know this video is a little bit different from the rest, but I really wanted to make something like this, so I did. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Also, please be sure to follow my Instagram and my Twitter, the links are in my YouTube description. And last but not least, if you want to know what a VIP experience for El Clasico looks like, you definitely want to check out this video right here, you won't regret it.